find them from similar districts. Like I said, this was just established in 2008, so we can't really you know, see as a, how the population has grown over time. But if you can find another district that has a model set up, you can use that. Uh, once again, emphasizing the importance of the, the 2010 census, I think letting people know to cooperate with the census workers, be honest in their answers, and let them know that this is really important. It's, it's based on funding and will really help their quality of life. And then also mobilizing what resources they do have. And we know from talking to them, they don't have a, a full planning staff, but <coughs> they can just find some people to go out and collect data and do surveys, not just not just with what the GSS tells them. So here are more of our specific recommendations. Uh, one is to lobby the GSS for more transparency. We, we found that it doesn't seem like the planners in the Ofenso district have a lot of interaction with GSS at the national level. And, and especially on their website, we feel maybe they should make it easier to get reports and things like that. Uh, and then also to centralize all the data that they have at the local level, whether it's from the Ministry of Health or the Ministry of Agriculture, and to look and see what they have so that, and to bring it into one central location so it's easy to access for everybody. Um, employ some sort of geographic information system. It, not only does it help you look at how the district is growing and changing spatially, it's a great way to manage and store data. There are groups out there like a volunteer organization like GIS Core and ESRI, uh, the largest providers, GIS software that'll help with pilot projects and they've, they've actually done some work in Ghana, I believe. Um, and then also partnering with other districts to find out how they're using their data, how they're managing their data, and possibly sharing information. So there's some of our recommendations for that. Now I think we're going to talk about community input. Right. My name is Josh. I have the community values and input section. Um, generally, we found that people want to be better off tomorrow than what they are today. Um, that just that applies pretty much everywhere. That should be the goal of planning. Um, it should also be sensitive to moving from hand to mouth and substance survival mindset to a bigger optimistic, brighter future. We want to give the people hope and uh, inspiration to move forward past where they are now. Um, and the perception of planning is tainted. That's been due to lack of resources and implementation. So often there's been talk about growth, but there has been no progress as far as you know, visual seeing actual things put together. Um, some of the challenges were on equal influence of participation in the planning process. Generally, you would go to meetings and there would be the loudest or women are not involved whatsoever. Uh, there's been a participate, participatory ruler, rural appraisal, which has been helpful in kind of bringing the bottom up and participation and getting their perspective what needs to be done. Uh, next step would be integrating the chiefdom traditions. Uh, a lot of the chief, the chief is highly respected in the community and it's important to use the resources of their ability to communicate with the public because a uh, lack of technology has made that difficult. And then lack of effective methods to engage residents and that also has to do with technology and the ability to actually incorporate the residents in planning what they see is fit. So, uh, our recommendations would be to identify and model successful engagement methods that could be through non-government organizations or non-profit organizations. They seem to have a lot of involvement. Um, improve communication and education with traditional forms of decision making. Um, basically what we were wanting to do with this is We'd like to use the chiefs to be able to communicate with the people because they have access to the people. And that's very important. And we'd like to have the chiefs basically present to the people. Uh, localized communication approaches, explore visual methods, that would be more on the technological side where we'd like to see you know, the internet being used to communication hopefully, and other methods. And, uh, makes it very Tony, and I'll be talking about the national policy. And basically, I wanted to start off with talking about the credibility of the census. 
And because of all the rapid population growth and urbanization in Ghana, as you guys know about, um, it's causing a lot of issues for policymakers and planners. So basically, if there could be an accurate census taken, a lot of a lot uh, more funding could be allocated for Ghana from outside sources. And the next one is scheduled for fall in 2010, and it's hoped that it'll be more comprehensive than the past censuses that have been taken. And people are kind of it's found that people are kind of worried about being truthful with the people who ask them questions about their families and their incomes, but since it's basically information that's not gonna to be told to anyone else, it's urged that they are truthful about it so that uh, accurate data can be collected. And this data can also be used to track the progress of the Millennium Development Goals. And so um, the National Population Council and the, um, the GSS are also, they're trying to get the media involved so that people can be, or so that the census is known about and so that people can be aware that they need to uh, give accurate information. So the censuses are separated at the national, regional, and district levels. And they are important to not only the country as a whole, but also to but also to the districts and regions. And they can also, the censuses can also be used to revise the electoral, electoral areas. So the National Development Planning Commission is, uh, their main goal is to form comprehensive national development planning strategies and to review plans as political and economic conditions may cause for revisions. And basically what they do, their main um, thing is to advise the president on developing planning policy and strategy. And it's uh, organized into two different offices. And the first office is the office of the chairman. And that office basically is run by the chairman and it advises the other office which is split into five divisions, the Economic Policy Division, the Production and Technology Policy Division, the Social Policy Division, Spatial Policy Division, and the General Service Division. And the, each of those divisions is responsible for their section while the chairman overlooks it. And so um, the Ghana Institute of Planners is an organization that brings together planners across Ghana and it has about 270 members. The Institute uh, addresses national debate issues and is pushing for education of its members and also the public. It has an agreement with the APA called the Ghana Exchange Program and the AP, uh, some of the things that go along with that are the APA is which the APA is the American Planning Association, and they are trying to help build the membership of the Ghana Institute of Planners and develop educational programs for them as well. And they're also providing a, a program where planners in Ghana can job shadow planners in America and learn from them. And hopefully uh, American planners will learn from Ghanaian planners to bring stuff back to America. And so next is the allocation of funding in Ghana. And so basically districts compete for government and external funding. The government funding in Ghana is a highly centralized priority and the budget is linked to each district's plan. The districts as I said, they compete for government funding and the district fund comes from the central government. District coordinator also works with the chief executive and the district coordinator uh, is nominated by the president and approved by two-thirds of the members elected by the district assembly. And the National 